In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Gaudete in Domino Semper. Gaudete. Dominus propi est. Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. The Lord is nigh. Today, Holy Mother, the Church rejoices, taking an ever so brief pause from her spirit of mourning. Today, she ever so briefly holds back her tears as she longs for the coming of her Lord. And she allows a smile to break across her face. Her eyes light up with joy, for she feels so intimately that our Lord is nigh. His coming is near. The joy of Holy Mother of the Church, the joy we too should seek to share in, is reflected so beautifully in her Holy Liturgy. At the start of Advent, to mark the beginning of the penitential season, to mark the beginning of the season of mourning, the priest adorned violet vestments, the organ stopped playing in all the churches, the bishop no longer wore the precious mitre. The church cried out for the Messiah in her prayers and supplications. But now, today, this one day of Advent, on this one day of joyful anticipation, rose vestments are permitted. The organ resounds throughout the whole church, accompanying the chants of the church as they are raised heavenward. The bishops assist with the precious mitre. The church now adopts a tone of joy and anticipation. Now I know that here we may not have the wonderful churches, we may not have the grand organs, we not, may not have the seraphic choir, or any choir for that matter. We may not have a bishop and his precious mitre, we may not have the rose vestments, but we can still share in the joy of the liturgy. We can still immerse ourselves in the spirit of Holy Mother of the Church. We can still rejoice this day as the coming of our Lord is near at hand. And for this, we must rejoice. For one who loves God and who has truly adopted the spirit of penance and of mourning this Advent, for one who has truly sought Christ, it is a true comfort and source of joy to hear the words, The Lord is nigh. The significance and anticipation of these words need not be explained to those who have lived the spirit of penance this Advent. Their penances and prayers, all the tears that they have shed, have been for one thing. They've been to detach themselves from the world, from its praises, riches and pleasures. They've been to detach themselves from all the world has to offer all in order to render themselves by God's grace, worthy of receiving the visit of our Lord, the infant King, this Christmas. And not just this Christmas, but for all eternity. And those who have truly adopted and lived the spirit of Advent understand so intimately that this world is truly a veil of tears. And by detaching from the world, they are able to see clearly the emptiness of all that it has to offer, able to truly experience the fullness of Almighty God. They are able to respond to his grace, able to pray better, to practice virtue more readily. And so they truly know the significance of the proclamation of Holy Mother the Church, that the Lord is nigh. The Lord of Lords is to come and to release them from the bonds of sin. The King of Peace is soon to come and remove them from their pain and suffering. The King of Kings is coming to reign over them for all eternity. And for this they rejoice. They truly rejoice. St John the Baptist prepared the way for Christ as we read in today's Gospel. And so Holy Mother the Church also prepares the way this day. But what we find in the gospel this day is a reminder and a warning to ourselves that there have stood one in the midst of you whom you know not. That is, there are those amongst us who are so indifferent to the coming of the Lord, so attached to the world, that they do not even recognise his coming. They do not prepare for it. 
just as the Jews of old failed to recognise the coming of the Messiah, or simply denied it because he was not the saviour they wanted. And so who are these people today? Who are these people amongst ourselves? Well, they do not fast, do not penance. They simply do not prepare in any manner for the coming of Christ, the saviour. And thus these people are not able to rejoice today. For they would have to ask themselves, rejoice in what? Rejoice in whom? When all you do is indulge in the world and all its pleasures and all the empty praise that it has to offer, it's very hard to see beyond it. It creates a sort of spiritual fog, darkening our eyes and keeping the light from it. And so those who are amongst us who do not recognise Christ in his coming, you must seek to dispel the darkness, to disperse the fog, Give up the world, give up its pleasures. Remove the obstacles to Christ's grace in your souls and truly prepare yourself for his coming. Prepare yourself that you may be deemed worthy of him visiting you, of sharing in the fruits of his redemption. Prepare yourself so that you can rejoice in the coming of your Saviour. If you truly rely on his grace and strive to rid sin from your life, to detach yourself from the world, then the desire for the Saviour will grow in your soul. And remember that Christ is fiercely jealous. He will not share you with anyone or anything. And so as long as you remain attached to the world, he will not take complete possession of you. So if upon reflection you can see yourself as the one being warned by St John the Baptist, and my Holy Mother the Church in today's Gospel, if you are the one whom they are trying to shake from their spiritual sloth, then use this moment as an opportunity to change. Do not just think, well I failed so far this Advent, so might as well just try again next year. No, renew your efforts. And if you have not even started with any effort at the beginning, start now. Meditate upon your need of a saviour. Meditate upon your sins and upon the sorrows of this life. Meditate upon the nativity of our Lord, upon his humility, his poverty, his love for you. Meditate upon how fleeting the pleasures of this world are. And ask yourself, do I love Christ or do I love the world? Christ came for all on Christmas Day almost 2,000 years ago. But he will not come to all this Christmas. He will not come to all every day. He will only come to those who sincerely prepare for him. To those who are worthy of him. And so, let's start now. Wake up, for the Lord is nigh. Okay, you did not start well. You have not sanctified Advent as you should until now. But give everything you have to Christ from here forward and he will give you far more in return. Give up even just one thing to deny yourself just one thing every day makes all the difference. Do it for Christ. And for those of you who have been truly mourning, truly yearning for the coming of Christ this Advent, rejoice today, for the Lord is nigh. But do not stop. His coming is only nigh and has not yet come to be. Yes, rejoice today, be re-energised. Not to gradually stop your penances, but rather be re-energised to increase your fervour, to increase your prayers and suffering. Just as he who wins the marathon will be the one who digs in at the very first sight of the finishing line. Just as the winner will be the one who goes faster and faster as others begin to tire. Just as the winner is the one who continues to grind, to scratch and claw his way to the finish line. So it is with him who is victorious in the spiritual life. 
He will be victorious who increases his devotions, increases his penances, his meditations on the nativity. It will be this one who is able to rejoice fully in the Lord this Christmas. For the reward for his victory is the visit of the infant king or saviour. It will be those who relax at the sight of the finish line, who reduce their penances, who reduce their devotions, who get complacent. It will be them who are not able to fully rejoice in our Lord this Christmas. And so let all of us pray this day with Holy Mother the Church. In Latin she says, Aurem tuam quasimus domine precibus nostris accomoda, et mentris nostre tenebras gratia tui visitationis illustra. Bend thy near, O Lord, we beseech thee, to our prayers and enlighten the darkness of our minds by the grace of thy visitation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.